Now on the bench today, I've uh, got an antenna for uh, the uh, 3G, 4G LTE. Um, this is one that I picked up off eBay. Originally, I did think this was a Yagi, but it's not. It's uh, supposed to be mounted uh, vertically and it's uh, omnidirectional. Not sure what's on the inside yet, but uh, it does cover quite a wide range. Uh, 6, 9, 8 megahertz all the way up to uh, 2.7 gigahertz there so yeah it's it's uh, an extremely wide band uh, antenna on the face of it um also on the uh, ebay page this uh, has apparently got uh, a uh, vswr of uh, 1.4 across the board which it's not going to have across the board um whether we uh, get frequency responses in uh, all of this range here uh, we're not going to uh, do that and the VSWR is not going to be the same across that range what they would do is take uh, the best point uh, best frequency response and the best point for the uh, VSWR and just stick that on the side of the tin but uh, let's take this over to the uh, bench take a look at the uh, frequency response of this and uh, then what we'll do is uh, we'll come back here, take this apart just to uh, see what's on the inside. Um, yeah, this has got uh, two coaxial cables uh, connected up here, um, which I don't think there's two separate antennas in here. May well be, but from some of the pictures I've seen on some of these cheap uh, antennas off eBay, these will just be uh, joined together as one on the inside. And if you really want to get a good signal with your, uh, say, your 4G setup, you do want to be going for two antennas, not uh, one antenna with two lengths of coax coming out. But uh, let's take a look at it over on the bench. So here's the uh, basic setup on the bench then. Um, I've got it vertically as it should be mounted to uh, use this. So let's have a look at the output on the network analyzer. So here it is on the uh, network analyzer then. I'm scanning from uh, 10 megahertz all the way uh, over here, all the way up to uh, 3.6 megahertz. And remember that this antenna says that it works from uh, 696 megahertz all the way up to uh, 2.7 gigahertz. Now, this is the best frequency response here in the middle. I've got the cursor set on there. It uh, goes from uh, 1.7 gigahertz all the way up to 2.2 gigahertz. So in that region, this antenna is going to work really, really well for you. Uh, down below that, in the uh, sub 1 gigahertz region, we're not getting a uh, response at all. Not really. So if you're looking at uh, operating this around uh, 800 megahertz, let's say, it's not going to do a very good job for you. Now this is supposed to go all the way up to uh, 2.7 gigahertz and we can see we've got a little bit there at uh, 2.7 gigahertz, not much of a frequency response but we've also got a nice dip here at around uh, 3 gigahertz, 3.1 gigahertz there. So yes, if you're going to use this at uh, the 1800 megahertz uh, to 2 gigahertz uh, frequency range for uh, your uh, 4G LTE it's going to work uh, pretty well it's got a nice response in that area but any other of the areas 2.7 gigahertz there all the way down to the sub 1 gigahertz level that's uh, around uh, 700 megahertz there it's not going to work very well for you at all but you can see here 1.8 gigahertz all the way up to uh, 2.1 gigahertz we've got a nice frequency response so Let's take a look at the inside of this antenna then to see what's going on in there but uh, already um, they're stretching things a little bit trying to claim that this antenna works over such a uh, wide range of the frequency because as you can see here on the screen it really doesn't. So as we saw there on uh, the network analyzer we're getting a uh, pretty good response there at around uh, 1800 to uh, 2.2 gigahertz uh, a nice response but uh, this is supposed to work from uh, 698 megahertz all the way up to uh, 2.7 gigahertz and you know as we saw on the network analyzer we're not getting much of a response at 698 but up to 2700 megahertz again 
we're not getting a response there either we're getting a uh, response around the three gigahertz mark but it's missing the uh, 2.7 megahertz and again below one gigahertz not much of a response at all so it's a bit of a claim to uh, a bit of a stretch to claim all that bandwidth all the way from uh, 698 megahertz to 2.7 gigahertz because it's just not there but uh, if you were to use this antenna um, around uh, 1.8 uh, gigahertz to uh, 2.2 gigahertz then it's probably going to work out pretty well for you you know i mean uh, but if you were to use it outside of those frequencies uh, not so much so we're getting there i had to take it over to the bandsaw as you can see and it's held in place there with a lot of uh, hot glue but already i'm seeing that uh, this antenna is put in a case uh, probably uh, twice as big as it needs to be just to give it that uh, element of uh, you know a much more powerful antenna but you can see there's a single pcb in there and indeed the uh, two coaxes here have just both connected to the same antenna i think now here is uh, the uh, antenna and uh, i have to say i did not bend this in any way removing it from its case this is exactly how uh, it was inside that uh, tube there and you can see just how bad this antenna is these uh, uh, elements here and here just look like they've been cut with a pair of uh, household scissors they're not even uh, square and uh, i'm not sure what this uh, little bent piece is doing in the middle there but uh, you can see an absolutely terrible build quality with this antenna and looking at it now i'm really really surprised that it worked as well as it did around uh, 1.8 gigahertz really is a bad job and a thing that i haven't mentioned yet is i paid 16 pounds and uh, free shipping for this and apparently it's got a gain of between uh, 10 dbi and uh, 12 dbi i'd also question that as well really is a bad job i mean i've made some antennas when i've been prototyping here in the lab that i've just uh, chucked together a design and just quickly to test it but even when i've uh, just uh, put something together really quickly to see if uh, something will uh, work or not i've never made it that bad before and you can see here as well that we do have the uh, two coaxes uh, just being joined together here we've got the ground on this side and the uh, driven element here the signal wire connected at the top here and it is a uh, based on a dipole design um, these two elements here and here are parasitic they're not connected in any way um, I mean whether this antenna was designed for something else initially and uh, they've added these bits of uh, brass here to get another frequency response over the spectrum I don't know but uh, yeah that's probably the worst antenna I've ever uh, taken a look at here in this lab so here is uh, some close-ups then with the uh, macro lens on just so you can see how bad this antenna really is the solder just looks like it's been lumped on there this is probably the worst antenna I have ever seen and trust me I've seen some bad ones and finally we have all the uh, coax here which is uh, just like speaker wire we've seen this kind of uh, coax before it's uh, absolutely useless extremely lossy and uh, from the pictures as well um, on the eBay description this antenna is designed to be uh, put in a loft or you know an attic space and then uh, you uh, lay the coax through your home to connect up to your uh, 4g uh, router but uh, I can guarantee that uh, the amount of loss that this coax has you're going to be losing at least 50% 
of your signal uh, maybe even more in fact uh, let's go over to the uh, test bench and, and give that a test because uh, I don't really want to spend any more time on this um, piece of rubbish here I'm not even going to take any measurements with that but uh, let's go and test this coax just to see how lossy it really is so this is the uh, setup then just a quick setup I'm using my uh, HP signal generator here I'm generating a signal of 2.2 gigahertz and uh, that's at 15 dBm we're measuring everything at 15 dBm just to make it a little bit easier so we've got the output coming into the coax here and then it's terminated at the uh, RF sensor and as we can see on the boot and power meter again this is all in dBm we can see we're only getting 3.84 dBm coming into the uh, boot and power meter so we're losing three quarters of our uh, power through this uh, speaker wire slash coax that they provided with uh, this antenna so if you were to use this antenna and uh, you know use this length of coax three quarters of your power is going to be wasted anyway um, it's just not fit for purpose now I was uh, sitting down to uh, edit this video and um, something that was uh, really bugging me about this and I didn't really cover in the video was the fact you've got these um, hand uh, cut with a looks like a pair of scissors not exactly uh, nice and square cuts either uh, this also this little uh, tab of uh, brass here I was wondering what the hell they were actually doing so I've removed them from uh, the PCB of uh, this antenna here and you can see I've tried to clean up some of the solder as well the solder is extremely poor quality it's like mud almost when it starts to melt but uh, I've cleaned it up the best I can I've uh, connected uh, the SMA connector up directly to this PCB board now and I want to test this on its own on the network analyzer so we can try and get a, an idea of what these were actually doing and they certainly have been uh, added by hand these cuts these slits that are in the PCB here have been done by hand with uh, a rotary tool they've not been milled out in a uh, factory and as I said the PCB looks like it's been professionally made and etched out but uh, these have been added and it's just a, a little bit confusing to what these are so let's take this on its own over onto the test bench hook it up and see what kind of response we get so the test setup is exactly as before I've also uh, mounted it back inside the plastic tube here because uh, this will have a slight effect on the uh, frequency response and I want to keep it uh, as similar as possible to the original test so taking a look at the frequency response now then we've got something that looks uh, completely different if I uh, move the cursor around can see here we've got this dip at uh, 2.5 gigahertz there and if we go up it's uh, good for about 2.3 gigahertz so almost a uh, Wi-Fi antenna we're not getting a good frequency response at uh, 1.8 gigahertz anymore and if we come all the way over here we're getting a much better response uh, around the uh, 900 megahertz range so they've obviously added those uh, little bits of uh, brass sheeting there to get a uh, better frequency response in this area around here where we no longer have uh, a dip there it's uh, much more narrow in uh, like I say the uh, almost 2.4 gigahertz spectrum and around here we're getting no response at all so you can see now why they've added those brass plates is to get a frequency response in the area around here for uh, 4G uh, LTE and it's also interesting to note that the uh, response down here at around 900 megahertz is a lot better than uh, not having those uh, little brass uh, pieces of uh, sheet metal in there very interesting but uh, probably the worst antenna I've ever seen um, so far on this channel um, there's not a lot I can say about the build quality to be quite frankly but uh, looks like they've just cobbled something together just to call the antenna a uh, 4G LTE antenna 
So, not a lot more that I can uh, say about this antenna. I think the uh, video speaks for itself. Uh, this speaker wire, absolutely not fit for purpose for a uh, antenna like this at all. I mean, uh, if you are buying this to uh, get better performance out of uh, something like your 4G router, and uh, you're probably going to get better performance with the antennas, the uh, standard antennas that your router comes with adding this is just going to uh, compromise your signal and make matters worse i mean even if the antenna performed a little bit better um using this uh, speaker wire here aka uh, chinese coax you're going to be throwing away two-thirds of uh, any signal gains that you're going to get by uh, you know possibly adding an external antenna up high and the way that they uh, couple these up as well with two SMA connections it's just not the way to go if you really want to improve things uh, you need to get two quality uh, antennas and keep them apart from each other experiment with the distances as well um, to uh, doing something like a uh, speed test because uh, there is a speed a sweet spot uh, positioning the antennas apart from each other um yeah it's it's possibly the worst constructed uh, antenna i've had on this channel although uh, if we look back on previous videos we have seen some uh, really bad ones in the past but uh, this is uh, it's quite amazing what was hidden inside uh, this uh, plastic tube in here did look like a professional antenna from the outside but when we take a look at the inside it's uh, just complete garbage so definitely want to stay away from then and uh, save your money i paid uh, 16 pounds and free shipping for this antenna there's uh, a whole host of sellers selling these on ebay and also sellers selling them on uh, amazon as well i would stay away from something like this but uh, i'm hoping to get a yagi in to look at um in the near future also looking at uh, building my own yagi for uh, 4g that uh, we can uh, take a look at and build and uh, hopefully uh, learn a lot from that but uh, if uh, you did enjoy this video please give it a uh, thumbs up any comments or questions uh, drop them below especially if you've purchased this antenna and you're not happy with it please let us know if you want to help support the channel in future and uh, help me get things like this into the lab that we can take a look at then please consider popping over to uh, patreon and uh, hopefully you'll join me on the next one